Welcome, everybody. I'm so glad that you are all here. Um, we are about to enjoy Discovery with Linked Data, Challenges and Opportunities with Huda Khan and Astrid Yusong. Um, and I'm going to introduce them. Um, Huda Khan is a software developer at Stanford University. She participated in several of the LD4L, LD4P series of grants with much of her later work focusing on enhancing library catalog discovery using linked data. And Astrid Yusong uh, is a user experience designer with Stanford Libraries. She works in digital library systems and services to create simple and engaging interfaces for catalogers and library patrons. Recent projects include Stanford Digital Repository and the overhaul of our external library website. Prior to Stanford, she worked in financial services for 20 years. And um, this is an uh, affinity group session. Um, Huda, would you like to go for it? Sure, thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Um, and those of you uh, who are on the sketch page should have a link to our agenda notes document and our slides. And I've shared those in the Slack as well. Um, so, but if, if you need them at any point, let us know and we will um, make sure uh, you can have those. So um, we're gonna do a quick intro. I think uh, we possibly have stuffed way too much into this session. But uh, in the spirit of our affinity group, which is you know a, usually a pretty good and informal uh, place to have discussions, we're hoping we'll have a mix of um, ideas we'll present, but also uh, allow um, the participants of the webinar or the session, sorry, to um, jot down their notes and ask questions and um, all sorts of good things. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the slides and uh, work our way through. Um, so, uh, thank you for coming to this session. A little overview of what the affinity group of this specific, the specific affinity group is about. Uh, you can find, again, links in the slides and look at our wiki page. Um, this particular affinity group was uh, put together several years ago. Um, and the purpose of this affinity group is to enable and support community input and discussion on topics that relate to the use and benefits of using linked data for enhancing discovery. And our focus has primarily been around library resources, but we also welcome discussion around um, museums, archives, and, and other CLAM institutions. Uh, to do a quick number recap, there's about 417 members on Slack, as, at least as of yesterday, 54 on our email list. Um, there's a link to our agenda and notes for 2024. And um, inspired by a note I saw on the art and affinity group that went uh, a little bit earlier today, uh, it is important to note the affinity group is open to all. You do not have to be affiliated with any institution uh, currently or previously working on linked data. If anything, I think it's a great um, avenue for people who are beginning to think about linked data questions as well as people who've been working on um, in this area for a while. The first ever meeting, like I said, was several years ago in 2019. Um, we've had a mix of demonstrations, discussions, and presentations, and we've tried to capture some of our outputs, and um, our work does have intersections with uh, work that was done in the LD4 grants prior. Um, we've presented or, or had a space at the conference. Um, the affinity group members have worked together on outputs like the Knowledge Panel white paper, and um, are currently working on the linked data discovery system spreadsheet, which um, I have been remiss. I was supposed to make sure that went out before the conference, but I will try to make sure, we will try to make sure it goes out um, by the end. And I do see Astrid uh, online. Astrid, if you wanna say hello real quick to everyone, that would be great. Hi, I'm sorry, I was having some technical difficulty, but I'm here now. <laughs> Thank you. Astrid and I have been co-chairing for a couple of years, uh, all the time uh, seems to have blurred together, but it's been great. Um, and to get give you a flavor of the sorts of topics we've covered, we've you know deeply interested in user needs and usability uh, to try to actually understand 
what people need to do when they're trying to discover library resources or resources online, and what can we learn from that, and where can we enhance their discovery experience. Uh, we can't really do very much with what the work that we're going to talk about if we're not thinking about the data and how we're modeling the information. We've discussed uh, specific technological approaches, um, what sorts of uh, processes and components need to be in place for uh, discovery to work. We've talked some about ethical concerns. Um, we're interested in areas around how, or questions around how we might evaluate whether we've done a good job. And uh, we've covered a lot of these bullets, uh, and there are some of these that are more aspirational. So. Um, we've covered a lot of these areas, but we also want to learn more about best practices. And this year, we started uh, thinking more about the intersection of knowledge graphs with uh, AI and machine learning approaches. Um, as noted, uh, the Affinity Group is part of the larger LD4 community effort, which you can learn more about at that link. We're always open to ideas and feedback uh, and trying to understand what formats might work better, what topics would be of interest. Um, we have been lucky enough at being part of the LD4 community to have several, uh, as we term them, crossover or guest episodes with uh, various other community groups. And so I think that's been, uh, we think that's been a wonderful mechanism to be able to um, integrate our, our, our various uh, specific foci together. Our next meeting is on October 22nd, um, and then I think in the Slack for the conference, you already have noticed that Art and Design uh, is having a crossover episode with us um, in November. So what we're going to do now is we're hoping um, to to touch a little bit about each of these area on each of these areas, and then maybe have you um, also write uh, some of your ideas in the document. Um, so this is an overview of the topics we want to cover. And again, it might be a slightly aggressive list, um, but we're hoping we definitely get to those last two bullets and have enough time for that. So we may end up having to speed through some of this. So we're going to start a little by talking about examples of linked data for discovery and production systems. So ones that exist right now, and maybe a few characteristics about those systems. We're going to start talking about where can we go beyond knowledge panels? We'll mention um, some questions around modeling and ontologies. And the two future facing topics we have that would be, uh, it would be really interesting to hear your feedback on is um, how do we prepare the you know cataloging world and workflows for thinking about um, their practices uh, using linked data to support discovery specifically. And the last topic would be um, how best can we support institutions that may have a variety of resources? So some that may have more than others, some that have less. How can we bring the entire community um, forward and support them in using uh, linked data for discovery? So to start off with the examples, and we're going to talk about two different groupings of these examples. And again, these are not you know necessarily like um, written law or you know comprehensive but th there's a way to think about this which is there's one way of approaching the use of linked data and discovery that focuses on the use of identifiers as a main connecting point between multiple sources of uh, linked data where the sources may be using different models and ontologies uh, and the focus is really on bringing out context um, to uh, supplement whatever information is already displayed in the system. So examples of this are library catalogs that use what's called linky mark. Um, and I don't know how official a term it is, but it is definitely one in use where the library catalog is still using MARC as its um, underlying way of modeling information or one of the fundamental ways it models information. And uh, what we do when we try to bring linked data into these systems is we use identifiers in the mark so the system knows where they could go find additional data from those linked data sources using those identifiers. And there are examples of this where you can see it, the Cornell Library Catalog, um, University of Wisconsin-Madison, and uh, the Alma Primo um, author panel 
or whatever work has been done in that area. And there are probably other examples here as well that I've not included, so please feel free to, to add those. So here's a quick example from the Cornell catalog. If you're looking at a particular item written by George Eliot, you can see the author up top here has a little author info button. And if you click that, it takes you to a page that retrieves information from Wikidata and uh, the Library of Congress um, and sort of brings them all together into this page that also includes information about the library catalog resource, so whatever is captured in the catalog itself. And so again, this approach is using identifiers to bring in that extra info, supplemental information, and sort of uh, use that in the display for the item. The important thing to note here is that this is purely a client-side addition. What that means in technical terms is uh, we aren't actually updating the index that drives discovery with this information from Wikidata, but we are using identifiers that are captured uh, in the system to get that info out. So that's you know one approach. Another approach, which we've seen several examples of um, at the at this conference is using, uh, really using the power of the graph where we have the people who are building these systems have a little more control over the graph itself. So they're aggregating across different sources, they're reconciling um, across different sources, and they're using a resulting graph that uses a common model uh, to really drive the display and the discovery features. So for example, the National Library Board of Singapore, Lux, Share VDE, I believe WorldCat entities. And again, if I got any of this wrong, I apologize, but I, I believe this is really the approach that um, all these systems are using where uh, they have the graph as the sort of last normalization layer that then allows for connecting across these resources, across all of these multiple sources of information and allowing that to come through in a unified way. Um, and so here are some screenshots from these various sources where um, you can see that um, you wouldn't, in these particular uh, examples, you wouldn't necessarily consider traditional library catalog views. Although I think with the share VDE one, there's work on integrating that or perhaps even um, using that in place of the traditional library catalog. Um, and so these are very entity-based views where entities are a primary sort of first object and the model and the way that this information is modeled bleeds through into the display. So this is different from the Cornell catalog, which is trying to use a still a very library catalog centric view. So uh, if it'd be great if we could get some of your thoughts on it. So what I'm gonna do is um, I will quickly show you where you can go in the affinity group um, uh, document. And it would be wonderful if you're attending this, uh, if you don't mind to also put in your name under attendees, which is a thing I should have said like 20 minutes ago. Um, but here, for instance, under examples of discovery with linked data successes, um, if people want to just spend a minute or two, it doesn't have to be very long, uh, thinking about um, what might inspire you about some of the examples you've already seen um, and uh, what other um, system examples uh, you could think of that use linked data for discovery specifically. Um, I think we could start there and maybe give everybody a minute to sort of catch up with the attendees and that and see if people have any ideas in that section. So just a heads up, we're gonna do um, a few more presentation sections. And then um, at, at the end of those, we'll try to save some time for writing things down and for discussing things. And if anyone has questions. And thank you, Jessica, for putting all that info in. Um, uh, the, yes, I can do that. They're asking if I can share the document. So the document's in here. And if you go to, um, it should take you to where it says 2024-1009 LD4 conference with this info. Thank you, Bob. 
Oh, I think I realized what I did. I didn't Slack or didn't chat with everyone. So thank you, Bob. Bob's, Bob's giving out the, the link. And the writing prompt, if you want to participate, um, is what do you find inspiring about current systems using linked data for discovery? And do you have any additional examples you may wish to highlight? And it's fine if you don't have anything to add, but it'd be great if you did. We'll give folks another minute, maybe. I apologize for not including the Jeopardy theme song at this moment. Okay. So we're getting some good ideas and, and folks feel, please feel free to, to keep writing even as I'm talking. Um, but just to sort of cover some of the things that have come up here already, um, the contextual knowledge cards uh, are being given a um, thumbs up uh, for authors who may not be well known and having that context is really useful. Um, Yale's Lex has come up more than once because it's bringing together all these resources and it's a different approach, um, which sort of, instead of going first to Mark and then translating it into BibFrame, um, doing the aggregation sort of uh, in, independently or directly first seems to be a good idea. And then getting that external information into a library system so users don't have to go elsewhere and allowing users to recognize resources beyond the local catalog. And um, yes, thank you. Please do add system examples, um, whether they're in production or in, in more prototype format. I think it would be great to see some of those. Um, so I think the, the two themes that seem to be emerging around inspirations is a combination of uh, adding context, uh, esp especially around resources that a user might not be familiar with, and also being able to bring in um, that external information so users don't have to go elsewhere. They can all they can get it all in the library system. And then also um, being able to recognize resources beyond the catalog, uh, and then a note around the implementation. Um, so thank you. That's, that's great. And please do keep adding to this while I I keep talking. Um, and if you have questions, I think our Slack and chat moderators will, will help with that. So feel free to interrupt me at any time. So going back to our slideshow, this is a bit of a whirlwind, but um, that gave us a flavor of what some of the work that's already been done and that's in production around bringing in linked data into the discovery layer. So a question we had, and when I say we, um, a few of us that attend the discovery affinity group calls sort of started to brainstorm um, what might be good to ask uh, in the session. And a question that came up was, where do we go from here beyond knowledge panels? So let's say knowledge panels and author cards um, are features that we seem to um, appreciate. Where can we go beyond that? Where What other use cases are there beyond adding context? Um, and, and maybe approaches that allow for an implementation that goes beyond just a client side integration. So what, what I mean by that again is the system itself isn't really holding on to anything but identifiers from other systems, other linked data sources. 
Um, and what we do is we grab that and bring that in. So uh, is there, what what opportunities lie beyond that? And it's both an opportunity and a challenge. Uh, and how to support traditional library catalog design or do we wanna to move to a different view altogether? So the library catalog design uh, still depends a lot on how we have traditionally thought about MARC, how we think about bibliographic resources. And perhaps that works great for, um, uh, for a lot of use cases, but with the shift that we want to make towards linked data, uh, do we want to continue doing that? Is that still the place to be, or are we thinking of a different view altogether? And then what would it take um, to go beyond what we have with knowledge panels, which seem to be um, probably the the least, co uh, least cost-intensive, lowest hanging fruit uh, mechanism of being able to bring, in, bring information in from linked data? When we start to go beyond that, what sort of uh, resource uh, expenses are we looking at? So um, this is again a question to all of you. Um, if we could spend maybe just you know a couple minutes, two or three would be enough to uh, think about where you might think is the most potential to move beyond knowledge panels and supplementary context for libraries, museums, archives, et cetera. And um, the second question may be too technical in, for some people um, and or not. Um, so the really what the second question is getting at is, um, should we consider approaches where we, as in the system that is building the display for discovery, where that system is also storing, caching, indexing, holding on to that context from linked, other linked data sources in some fashion? and not just reaching out and um, bringing that in, but and the reason to do that would be to integrate it uh, really within the system with all the other uh, information about um, the resources. And if these questions don't make sense, please feel free to just ask in the chat or Slack, but um, hopefully this is a good enough writing prompt. So uh, if folks wanna start on that, um, I can keep, I think everybody knows where to go here. What I can do, is keep the prompts up uh, on the screen so that um, you don't have to keep uh, changing to the slides. So let's give everybody, I already see some good writing going on. Let's give everybody maybe two minutes and then we'll check back in and see. As people are writing, Astrid, did you have anything to add or ways to word this que these questions that make more sense? <laughs> no, I think it makes sense. I think you've covered everything. Thank you. Sure. Just a couple more seconds, I think. And again, feel free to keep typing uh, even as we do the presentation. I think one of the benefits of having an informal discussion group like the Discovery Affinity Group has been from the get-go is um, the comfort level that knowing that none of us necessarily have all the answers and possibly have more questions than answers. And in this area that uh, simultaneously one that a lot of us have worked on for a long time and also one that still has a lot of challenges, uh, it's it's useful to be able to get as much insight and feedback from 
the community as possible. Okay, so um, we've got some really great ideas going on here uh, and actually quite a few. So thank you. Um, virtual collections between libraries to celebrate a particular event or occasion. So trying to make that connection between different libraries. Uh, is it technically possible to depend on only external data? Is indexing and caching the most practical way? Um, is it technically possible to depend? It, it is technically possible. I think that is what we're seeing. Um, I think the problem is, so to go back to the indexing question, for example, for the information in, and I'll just show it so it's easier. All of this information coming in from DBpedia or Wikidata um, isn't actually searchable. So let's say that uh, the library uh, catalog information on George Eliot doesn't have some specific words in here or maybe um, where George Eliot was educated, but you wanted to you know, find that in the library catalog. Unless you capture that information in the index, you can't really search for it. Now that's the index mechanism. I think there, you know, you could possibly rely on a collection of queries to fuel your interface. So that is perhaps one approach to do it. But I think that's the question you've asked. That's a very good question. Um, and, you know, look the kind that would need more discussion, but it's, it's exactly sort of the, the area that would be interesting to explore. Um, there's probably pros and cons to, to both of these approaches. Clustering uh, multiple translations into a single opus, hub or work, and versions and editions. So work translations, editions, versions, you know, copies of all of that, um, being able to find that in a consistent way, that might in fact be a really interesting way to use um, uh, linked data and the way we can model this, this um, work. Linked data visualizations, showing connections between various components, displaying relationships for more granular works that, that don't have LC authority records, such as linking to a poem to its musical setting in a choral work, um, or linking to all musical works that use a particular musical tune. That does sound really cool. Um, related resources like a virtual bookshelf, annotations, linking sequential items, and then linking to multiple classification systems. And geological data, my dream is to use AI LLMs to make Sparkle queries accessible to the general public. Um, that would be a, kind of an interesting way to do it where you would be supporting people in generating the queries um, that they would want to use. I don't think patrons will intuit the internal external divide and may be confused by display info that isn't indexed. That is a, a usability concern um, and kind of going back to why we might want to have that information be searchable too. Um, so indexing is a technical approach, but I think going back to that question around, is that the only way? Um, I think generally the question of providing a consistent user experience is, use, is, is important. And then how do we go about it? That's the open question. Indexing and caching. Um, next step would be to have discovery systems be able to index linked data. Open source alternatives like you find in Blacklight seem like the easiest route. That have been the sort of traditional library catalog go-tos where the index is really the main point of discovery, of, of modeling that information for discovery. And then Blacklight and Viewpoint are the front ends. Um, if we don't want to do everything in the index, we would then have to figure out how to customize Viewfind and Blacklight in order to be able to take advantage of that. So it's it's an open question. Find ways to select from many more data sources for different disciplines, types of material, cache some of it, provide links out. So I think, yes, and the multilingual search interface. So there are a lot of opportunities here and a lot of open questions. So um, we don't have the answers, um, but I think if people can think of you know, examples that um, they have, they, you know, you are, are obviously already thinking of great examples, but specific systems and maybe keeping an eye out on um, what people are doing that might address some of, some of these comments. I think that would be great. 
Okay, thank you so much. So we're going to move on. And I think we touched a little bit about the, some of what's come out already. So, um, you know, in the comments that you all have um, provided. So we're going to Usually anything that has a frame on it, it takes most of the presentation, but we're actually gonna run through this real fast because we only have 15 minutes left and you all have been so kind to add so many great ideas. So um, going back to the question of um, how information is modeled and what that means for discovery. So there are multiple ways you could model metadata. Um, BibFrame is, is one we were all discussing at this conference. I think the National Library of Singapore example also showed us the utility of schema.org as a mechanism to model the information. Then we have authority information coming from a variety of sources. We have cultural heritage information, Cydoc CRM is something that was mentioned at the conference, and many other types of uh, resources that may have specific models and ontologies that are used for them in various areas. So, um, you know, a model enables us to capture relationships, identify what the main entities are, uh, how we could aggregate across the resources that's come up, I think, in, for example, the National Library of Singapore presentation, but also the comment we had around opus, um, opuses, opi and hubs, et cetera. Um, defining equivalence, the Lex presentation showed us how that is, you know, in practice, we want to be able to say things are um, the same, but in practice, are they really the same? What is the data actually telling us and who's responsible for cleaning, cleaning that up? So there are a lot of questions around modeling uh, that we cannot possibly all answer. Opera, yes, thank you. It is opera. I have heard that and I entirely forgotten. Um, so I think if we could spend maybe just two minutes, uh, if you all could, whatever your favorite model or ontology is, or one that you really want to see in practice being used, um, can you think of ways where the use of that model or ontology is really making discovery tasks easier or making possible tasks that may not have been possible before? Now, I will tell you, this is a very difficult question because it is the question that we have been grappling with in one form or another ever since we started thinking about discovery and linked data. Because we want to go beyond just like, yes, in theory, it'd be great if we could model all the stuff this way to here are practical ways that being able to model these particular relationships or aggregations or entities will help discovery. So it is a very tough question, and I do not expect um, that we will all have an answer in two minutes, but if you have thoughts around it, um, I think it would be great to add to the document. So again, I will give everyone, and now I'm trying to calculate when they said 15 minutes left. So let's give everybody two minutes to go through this um, and um, maybe spend just a minute reviewing the answers. And I'll keep the prompt up if you folks could add some stuff to the document. And thank you again to the people that have been doing that. Um, we appreciate it. And hopefully what we can do with the ideas that you've presented in the document is feed that back into the affinity group and think of sessions that could address some of these questions in more detail. Susan has a comment that um, she, she nominates my favorite ontology as a reality show for next season. That's actually really good. We we might do that, Susan. We might do that in the affinity group. I love it. Okay. Sorry to speed everybody along, but uh, 
you can blame time management issues on me. Um, okay. Um, LRM and RDA uh, is the best thing to look at. It owes a lot to Cydox CRM, although they haven't finished work on events. How might we fill in information in the models we already have efficiently? Everyone's seen a three-line NACO personal name record or wiki data, data item um, that only has a human property and these gaps aren't helpful for the work we're doing. That is a very uh, cool question and might be great fodder for a future discovery affinity group session. Give users a better way to find versions and formats available, yes. Come up with agreement on how to label entities for end users so they understand. Um, if you could, whoever wrote that, if they could add a little bit more about maybe an example, that would be great just as an explanation. So I don't know whether you mean like labeling people, labeling works, labeling instances or something else. So that'd be wonderful. Models and ontologies that are flexible enough and incorporate other ontologies where it fits, actually using the strengths of RDF. Yes, uh, stitching ontologies together. Okay, so thank you very much for that. And please keep adding to the, the ideas. So we have, I think, maybe 10 minutes. So let's spend uh, three minutes on each of these and then we'll have time to wrap up. So one of the questions, um, that came up when we were thinking about what we might do in the session is, um, how can we support cataloging practices using linked data in a way that enhances discovery? How can we prepare um, the cataloging sort of workflows and everything to build that support in? And I think, not to put Allison on the spot, I think Alice, uh, Allison is here. I do see you, Allison. Allison, if I have misinterpreted or not worded the correct uh, the question correctly. Please feel free to add to the chat or you know chime in. Um, but uh, let's just I don't have anything. To, I don't have a whole lot to say on this. This is really just a discussion question for people to think about. You know, based on some of the things we've already talked about so far, um, there's obviously a very strong link between how we catalog things and what is possible through discovery. So if we're moving, we're shifting in the process of, of moving towards uh, more and more linked data in our uh, cataloging, what does that mean for what we want to enable on discovery? And what should we, the flip side of that is what should we support in cataloging now as we move towards a more linked data approach? Allison, feel free to add your comments in chat if I got any of that wrong. So I'll leave this prompt on. Let's give it another maybe two minutes and um, whatever you can think of about this idea. And again, I've given, we've given you all the hard questions, um, but th these are the ones we need to think about as we move towards this um, newer world anyway. So I'll leave the prompt up for about a minute and then go check. Thank you, Jessica. I usually, we usually don't quiz people like this at our regular affinity group meeting, but um, since the chance uh, was provided, <laughs> we took it. Okay. Let's. Oops, go back here. Uh, so here are some specifics around cataloging. I think that's excellent. Content type, carrier type are reflected in the leader field, I think. And 33.3x are applied consistently. I'm not a cataloger, so apologies if I uh, got get anything wrong. Advocating for the in integration of external identifiers in NACO Wikidata use and a new policy at Northwestern where Wikidata work is now part of regular catalog of workflows. These are some excellent ideas, um, really bringing the worlds together and, and from the get-go, having that be part of the 
the way the catalogers work. Um, so please feel free to continue typing. We're nearly uh, maybe five or six minutes out. So let's just go to the last question. Um, and again, this is up to um, whatever ideas you might have. And thank you, Bob, for the comment in the chat that this is fun. Um, so different institutions have both a different, um, are, are at a different stage in learning about adopting, implementing, experimenting with linked data. So if we have institutions that may not necessarily have the resources to be uh, actively developing or experimenting with linked data, how can we best support them in, in getting, you know, in being able to either Maybe it's making the, the case to administration because that seems to come up. Maybe it's finding really concrete real, real examples that they can then point their um, decision uh, makers to and say, you know, here's examples of how that works. Maybe it's technologies that make things smoother and easier. Maybe it's training resources. It could be anything. Um, so those are just some examples. But how can we support all of us uh, what are some ideas where we could bring everyone um, into being able to use linked data and use it for discovery? Uh, how how can we make it easier for people? And what might we be able to provide them? So let's spend about a minute or two on that, and then we can we can wrap up. And all ideas are welcome. So, um, hi, Huda. As we're wrapping up here, um, we don't have any questions right now in Slack or in Zoom, but I wondered if you would be able to put like your email or something into Slack. Oh, sure. Um, in case folks would like to continue talking about this uh, topic. Lots of comments about how fun this session has been and a lot of um, interesting ideas. Thank you. Yeah, we will. I will do that after. Um, let's see. Larger institutions could function as mentor institutions and in helping to demystify the process. It's discovering tech folks and librarians trying to bridge a difficult gap. Whatever bridges this group can build will be immensely helpful. Um, yes, I think those are some great ideas. Um, work more collab collaboratively. Yes. So yes, please feel free to keep adding. Um, and uh, I think if folks have specific ideas for people, uh, demonstrations, uh, presentations, I think that would be great to that address any of the areas that we've seen, uh, feel free to add them under the wrap up discussion. Um, bullet. I think it would be great to for us as the affinity group to be able to address some of these areas and then um, really bringing the people that are working at the forefront of this um, and see what we can do to help. So there are lots of other questions uh, that we will definitely not have time. Like for instance, what about Folio or systems like Folio? Um, multilingual support already came up as a comment, so thank you for that. And then um, just in general, questions that you might have around where we can go from here to support better discovery. So again, if you have any topics of interest, any people that you think are um, working on an area that might be help might be able to help us understand how to approach any of these questions, please feel free to tell us. And uh, to do that, there are a couple places. Um, we do have a GitHub IO, but uh, you can easily find us on the Discovery Slack channel in the LD4 workspace. Um, I will um, add my email address uh, and Astrid, if you wish to do that as well, in the Slack channel. And um, we can go from there. And thank you for participating because um, you know it would have been very lonely for us if I was the only one writing anything and I think nothing new would have come from that so I appreciate all your work and your ideas and um, I appreciate the we Astrid and I both appreciate the opportunity 
to have uh, been a part of this. Astrid, do you have any parting thoughts or comments? Um, there were so many amazing ideas and um, some of them actually being um, worked on right now. So we'd love to have you come to our affinity group meeting and talk more. Yep. Thank you all. I think we're on time. Amazing. That's amazing. Thank you both <laughs> so much. This was really enjoyable. And you've got so many great ideas to work with now. Thank yeah. you both very, very much. Um, and I am going to uh, pop in the next presenters. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you all. Bye. Bye, everyone.